Literally the best gaming monitors, Asus at CES 2024. We're here at CES 2024 in the Asus booth. Check out their brand new gaming monitors. I've been really tempted to get a new gaming monitor soon. How pretty she is. I don't want this anything right that big. Just the PG 39 I want like a 27 inch. Here's what I'm looking for, just so you guys know, before we look at all these monitors. I'm looking for like a 27 inch. I wouldn't want to do anything bigger than that. So 27 would be my max. I, maybe I could justify 24. A 27 inch, 1440p, 240 hertz OLED monitor. I think there those do exist right now, um, but obviously like the cleaner and sexier they look, I think those are like, those would probably be like 800 bucks, 800, $900. Got it because Asus sponsored this video. Almost forgot the disclosure there, but I'm not going to forget how freaking good this thing looks. This I just want to try OLED, OLED monitors. It's yeah. By LG, and it goes up to 1300 nits. Now that is only for 3% of the display, but that is pretty typical of this. A 32 inch is good, yeah. For how far I sit from my setup though, like my main gaming monitor, I feel like 27 inches is good. You sure you can take 27 inches? Or I hate this Mario camera. Or even some of the less honest LCDs. So you get those like pinpoints that are so freaking bright on an OLED, but you also get those just absolutely perfect blacks. Oh my God. These things look some nice. Now this one specifically is 30. Yeah, and I don't like curved monitors at all. I think if you get curved monitors, you're an NPC. Nine inches. There will also be a 30. Unless you're getting an ultra wide. If you're getting like an ultra wide, I understand curved. But if you're getting like a curved 27 inch or 24 inch monitor, you Jesus. Version that's essentially the same thing, but a, a tiny bit small. There's your monitor curved to the right or to the left. I hate this guy. As I'm sure you have assumed. And it has curves towards your mom, Kelton. It's up to a 240 hertz refresh rate. So Maybe I could get a 1440p 360 hertz monitor. That's OLED. Okay, I'll, I'll shut up and start watching this video. Let's come in here. We've got a bit of Rocket League booted up. I really like Rocket League because it's such a vibrant game and it allows us to really see- Fortnite's a vibrant game, Alex. For one, and also just how nice this thing looks. The amount of contrast on this thing is just fantastic. I feel like Rocket League wasn't showing off the like intensity of this display that I was looking for. One moment here. Here we go. Now you obviously cannot tell how pretty this is because you're looking at it through NFX3, through YouTube, and then through your monitor. But just like the glints on Buddy's helmet here are so- Damn, you can kind of tell on the camera too. The contrast between him and like his cape, oh, it is very nice. What if you could see a visual image of what's back there? Well, that's what this company said. Now, what you might- What if you could see a visual image? Let add. Might be thinking is that like this fire right here, that's really bright and making things really bright consumes a lot of power and a lot of power creates a lot of heat and OLED displays really do not like that. If they are getting too bright, they will burn in and they will just start looking bad and die eventually. Which is why Asus has their brand new heatsink assembly. Now, we talked to them for an hour to try and get permission to take one of these apart. They wouldn't. I am very sad about it, so we'll have to in the future. I was trying to find some marketing BS name for it, but instead it's just the highly efficient custom heatsink for effective heat management. But what that is doing is that on the scaler and on the power delivery, they have heatsinks on there to make sure that no more than about 60 degrees Celsius is able to make its way to the panel. They also Damn. have a massive- That's cool by PC standards. Across the whole thing to make sure that, you know, she's staying just real nice and cool. Maybe, you know, that's that one's just 240 hertz. You don't want that, you want 480. This right here is the PG27 AQDP. It's 1440p, 480 hertz, and holy heck, buddy in the little spaceship, he is completely clear all the way across. Like, at 240, he looks pretty good. Damn, you can kind of tell, you could, oh wait, that's a really bad frame. But the Damn, the 60 FPS one literally looks cleaner. Wow, that's actually really interesting. When you pause the video, it actually looks clear in reverse, right? Like 60 FPS actually looks the cleanest and 480 FPS looks the blurriest, but I think that's because the camera is probably recording at 60 or 30, maybe? That's really interesting. But you can see just how many like more versions there are of the, right? So I imagine like of the, whatever this little alien spaceship thing is, I bet when you're looking at it with your eyes and like the motion clarity, like tracking that with your eyes, it probably looks super clear to be there in person. Yeah, 
120 literally looks double. That looks triple, and that looks quadruple. It's so that's so interesting how it like doubles. Some math. Motion clarity of this guy is absolutely incredible, and it can be even better. Asus says they're going to have black frame insertion. Is that OLED on these panels? Although they're oh yeah, it's a 480 hertz OLED gaming monitor, and it's 1440p 27 inches. Okay, that's what I'm getting. How much is that? Page. I have money from my member marathon to spend it on. <laughs> about the details, and you might be wondering, why do you want that? So. In the past, black frame insertion was used because the pixels were pretty darn slow. They're right laggy, so they would strobe the backlight so that- There's no way that's $4,000. I would be surprised if it's more than 1,500. Do you really think 4,000? As the pixel is like, you know, changing from one color to the next, you wouldn't see that and you wouldn't get those smearing effects. These days though, that isn't oh. a problem because OLED pixels are just- <laughs> They're right fast. The problem though is your own eyeballs and just their analog image persistence. So if there's like an image on the display and it moves, your brain and eyes kind of think of it as one thing. Whereas if you put a little black frame in there, your eyes are like, oh, it's new information every single time that it does that. And huh. it can look absolutely fantastic. Now these do support free sync, although they didn't say if it supports G-Sync because it is currently going through validation. Although it might be safe to say it will in the future, but <laughs> we're not gonna look at that. Now in the past, a lot of the time, if you have a 400 Give me a price, Alex. Channel, it will look really good in games and pretty poo poo in everything else because they will sacrifice everything for that pixel response time. Not the case here. This thing also has the 1300 nits peak brightness, 99% DCI-P3 coverage, and it just looks very, very nice. Asus said that for this generation, they had to completely redo how they calibrate their OLED panels because for one, it's just very different than LCD, but also these things are so hecking bright, they had to just, well, they don't have- Why would you want a 1440p rather than 4K? 4K is higher resolution, but for like perceived clarity, like I'm sitting an inch, you know, like maybe a foot and a half away from my monitor. The actual jump in like quality from 1440p to 4K, yeah, it's gonna look a little bit better, but I'm gonna take a way bigger performance hit in order to power games at a resolution of 4K. So I'm gonna start getting less FPS. I feel like 1440p is that sweet spot where I can get really good FPS, have the game look really good, especially at the distance that I'm sitting at, right? Um, I feel like 4K would probably be overkill. Not only would it cost more, I get worse FPS because I play competitive shooters mostly. I care more about FPS than I do perceived quality most of the time. So yeah, 1440p, I feel like it's a sweet spot. Very many details about it, cause you know, these aren't out yet. They don't want to give away too much. But uh, according to my eyeballs, they did a very good job. If I was getting like a TV or something, I'd want my TV to be 4K because I'm sitting, you know, yeah. Oh, maybe you're super screen, indecisive. So. Do I want 480 hertz? Do I want 140 hertz? No, oh, you can have both right here. So right here is the PG32 UCDP. This also has that LG panel that is OLED 1300 nits. But this one right here can be either 4K 240 hertz or oh, full HD 480 oh. hertz. There also will be the ROG PG32 UCDM. So same thing, <laughs> except this one has a P. But that one right there will have a QD OLED and it will be only up to a thousand nits. And like, you know, Samsung's panels, are they even that good anymore now that we have these OLEDs? I was hoping the Asus reps would get mad at me, but they, I guess, just agree that the LG ones are really fantastic. <laughs> Technically, in every way, this panel is better. Now, the Samsung will have the advantage that it's going to be launching this month, which will be sooner than the, the wings rest are actually of really good. Be more like late Q1, maybe early Q2, somewhere around there. And uh, it kind of shows. So this guy right here currently does not have the working dual mode. So unfortunately, we cannot play around with that. But I know what a lot of you guys might be thinking is just like, why? Why would you want those? Why not just pick one? And they basically said, well, we can do 480 hertz, but you cannot even drive that. Even with like a 4080, 4K 480 hertz, it is not going to happen. Yeah. So right. if you do some esports titles and then like sometimes do content creation or just like want to look at text that's really nice and clear, that's where that 4K is really going to come into its own. Now, one pain point of monitors is always just using a little OSD in the monitor, huge pain in the arse. So Asus has, well, they've had this before, many companies have had this before, but they have a new and improved OSD within Windows. This allows you to oh. do fun things like change the brightness. Nice. Will it actually work? Oh my God, it actually worked. This is all pre-production, so I wasn't 100% sure. 
but almost more importantly is their OLED care stuff. So of course, LG within the firmware of the panel makes sure that it's not going to burn in too much. But if you wanna just be a little bit more careful, you can come in here, they've got display saver, adjusting logo brightness to make sure that just like you don't have your Windows logo end up on your screen at all times. Or you can manually force the pixel cleaning. What happens if I click that? Don't do it. Pixel cleaning fail. <laughs> Well, it's uh -oh. tried. Now we don't have final pricing for any of these, although they did say that the 34 inch version of the PG34 WCDM is going to be around $1,300, which when you compare it to something like the QD OLED monitors that- If the 32 inch is gonna be, how much is that? How much the size? The 34 inch version. If a 34 is gonna be like around 1,300, that's already under like what I was expecting the top end of the 27 inch is 900. Okay, that's that's like, that's expensive, but that's like not the most unreasonable thing. I think when I bought the monitor that I currently have new, I've had it for like two years now. I got this for like 800. This is a 1440p, 240 hertz. It's gorgeous, it's just not OLED. It's heavy though. It's big. The PG34 WCDM, it's going to be around $1,300, which when you compare it to something like the QD OLED monitors that exist right now is pretty good but it firmly puts you in like Nicholas Plouffe ultra display nerd territory and not sort of more like normie display territory. And I was kind of wondering like, normally you get this new ultra like, yeah, it's the most beautiful display you can get, but we haven't really seen OLEDs trickle down at all. And like, and what once was premium like three years ago, it doesn't exist as a mid-level device these days. You just keep on hmm. refreshing the most expensive of those. That's kind of and annoying, Asus yeah. was saying that there is a good reason for that. And that's mostly just that OLED customers do not want to compromise on the image quality at all. OLED is still just kind of new, like, People who are gonna go after an OLED, those kinds of shoppers are gonna be willing to spend more. That kind of makes sense, even though that kind of sucks, right? Cause I, it's kind of like for most people, that's why like when people can just throw 4K on a TV, but the panel itself could suck and you can sell those at Walmart for like 300 bucks, like a 60 inch TV. People are like, oh, 4K TV, 600 bucks. And like, it like fundamentally looks like shit, but like people, most people don't really care about that yet. That's the thing. We're not really at a point where people care too much. And there have been other companies that had less bright OLED panels that were returned to them because- I feel like that'd be too wide for gaming though. Yeah, I agree. For like content creation, like imagine for like a Adobe Premiere timeline, like having that much real horizontal real estate would be awesome. But yeah, if I'm gonna be getting a gaming monitor, I wanna keep it 16 by nine. I don't need anything this big. As the customers were not very happy with the brightness and the performance compared to their old LCD ones. So they could do stuff like remove that really expensive custom heatsink from these but then they either have to really drop down the brightness or you just have to live with a bunch of burn-in, which I don't think any of us want. Yeah. So this right here, as economies of scale and stuff start happening, might get a little bit cheaper, but for now, it's just for the ultra nerds. That said though, the ultra nerds are getting some really beautiful displays. Just Let's like be real, the ultra nerds are the people who watch this video, you know what I mean?